Tonight, we want to welcome our viewers from around the world to this breaking news coverage. An American journalist has been beheaded by ISIS terrorists. A video showing the horrific killing and its gruesome aftermath was released on the Internet a short while ago, along with a message to the United States to end its intervention in Iraq. The victim was freelance journalist James Foley, who was kidnapped in 2012 while covering the war in Syria. In the video, he is seen kneeling next to a man dressed in black, fully reads a message presumably scripted in detail by his captors that his real killer is America. The video, which is obviously too gruesome for us to show you, then shows Foley's beheading. After that, it shows another American journalist also dressed in orange and kneeling, and that man is believed to be Steve Sotloff, a contributor to Time magazine who was kidnapped at the Syrian-Turkish border in 2013. The terrorist says his life is hanging in the balance, depending on what President Obama does next. Let's bring in our uh, senior international correspondent, Nick Payton Walsh. He is in Erbil in northern Iraq. Nick? Brianna, James Foley was kidnapped in November 2012, a comparative long time ago, uh, when the Syrian civil war was on the way near a town called Taftanaz, Binish, uh, whilst coming out of an internet cafe. There, uh, it was unclear at that time who had taken him, and back then, ISIS, as it's now known, didn't really exist inside Syria and less uh, so in its current form in Iraq. So clearly within the 636, if you count the day, days in which he was held in captivity, uh, he changed hands within the underground that functions as sort of Syria's kidnap business. There are a lot of Americans, it seems, held, have been held at some point, or other foreigners by the various different groups that make up Syria's uh, rebels at times, some of them more criminal, some of them moderate. And as time has gone by, uh, ISIS, it seems, has moved into that particular market and taken some of those individuals to one side. I've spoken to one American who actually escaped kidnapped by uh, Syrian rebels, the more extreme variety, uh, and he described uh, how long periods were spent locked underground. He eventually managed to escape uh, from that and described also the torture he'd suffered. But in this circumstances, uh, for James Foley's family, a horrific uh, time. He was a veteran correspondent in many conflict areas, uh, was briefly detained in uh, 2011 in Libya uh, by Muammar Gaddafi's forces and as I say then uh, detained uh, and then subsequently it's not clear what exactly his path was, who uh, held him until we've seen this horrifying video today, the orange jumpsuit reminding many people of uh, the past videos people have seen emerging from Iraq during the times of the insurgency against the American presence there. And of course it would be equally troubling for the other American journalist referenced in that video to see him also uh, in an orange jumpsuit. A deeply troubling moment I think for many of the journalists who've been covering this conflict for quite some time to have known that our friends and colleagues have been held by ISIS and then released some of them, some of them still held now. And many, I think, were worried that if U.S. intervention began against ISIS, who in the eyes of many observers are yeah. in the li likely long term a threat to the United States' interests, that if U.S. military campaigns against them began, and that those Americans held by ISIS may meet the kind of gruesome fate that it appears we have seen uh, James Foley meet in this.